Hey everyone, my name's Mason. I'm with the uh, RSU with a few of our members here. We're carrying the big banner with the red star on it. Uh, it stands for Radical Student Union, and we're based out of UIS. So. But um, we just have a few things to say. We'd like to start off with a poem that is called The 90 and the 9. And it was published October 25th, 1884. So it was a really long time ago, and it was in the Alarm, a Chicago socialist paper edited by the Haymarket martyr Albert, Albert Parsons. Yeah. And, um, Sonny, would you, are you Like this? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, and uh, this, though they didn't publish the name of this author of this poem, it was a woman, so we know that, so. Yay for feminism! <laughs> Alright, so this is how it starts. There are 90 and 9 that live and die in want and hunger and cold. That one may revel in luxury and be lapped in its silken folds. The 90 and the 9 in their hovels bear. The one in a palace with riches rare. They toil in the fields, the 90 and the 9, for the fruits of our Mother Earth. They dig and delve in the dusky mine and bring its treasure forth and the wealth released by their sturdy blows to the hands of the one forever flows. From their sweat of their brows, the desert blooms and the forest before them falls. They, they labor, their labor has built humble homes and cities with lofty halls and the one owns city, homes and lands and the 90 and the nine have empty hands. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers to the woman, right? Yeah. Okay. You. And uh, this is Chris, and he's going to talk about uh, some other my right ideas. Hi, my name's Chris, and I'm with the Radical Student Union as well. Today, nearly 20, 127 years to the day, within 10 days of that, uh, we stand here to address the same grievances. We stand in solidarity with Occupy Wall Street, with populist movements around the globe. We come here with memories of the martyrs throughout history in our hearts, guided by the same principles and the same dreams. Today, 127 years later, we still cry out, we are the 99%. Despite over 100 years of reform and legal change, we take to the streets again to demand equality, justice, representation, and true social change. The banks, Wall Street, big business, the government, those 1% are just corrupt representations of the many symptoms of capitalism, which are tearing at the fabric of our communities, minds, and lives. Greece, the reason to take and not leaving them behind for the next in line, promoting profits over people. These are values that stand like a wall before us. We understand that greed is not something that can be eradicated, but instead we call for greed to cease to be the driving force behind our society. We trace our green centric society back to its capitalist roots, firmly entrenched in the system itself. There can't be no capitalism without greed at its heart. We have seen law after law, reform after reform, lead, in, lead into a slight improvement of conditions for some, a minimum required appeasement. The systems and structures that seek to maintain hegemony will only seek to bring change that perpetuates the powers that be, that continues to feed the very cycles that brought us here together. As we gather to remember that we are the 99%, we, never, we must never forget that globally we are the 1%. We strive not only to better ourselves, but for a better life for all. This movement cannot stop here. We We cannot accept domestic gains and move on back into happy, uh, in the happy habits. All around the world, we see independent movements simultaneously standing up, making their voice heard. We gain inspiration from these struggles. From Cairo to New York, from Palestine to Spain, we stand in solidarity in the name of a better future. Yeah! Italy, Italy, Pretty much the whole world. We are committed to social justice, which for us requires not simply belief, but direct action. Direct action! Action that moves our society closer to address, to address recognizing and providing for the basic needs of all people. 
We, for, we oppose all forms of oppression, domination, and exploitation, no matter their origin. We recognize the inherent power every human being possesses, the power that governments attempt to channel and oppress. It is this power that we are here to demonstrate yeah. today as a plurality of voices standing to confront the status quo. Tired of not being resented, represented, pushed aside, being left behind, we are brought here together. We are the embers that glow bright through the night. And gathered together, we will ignite the flames of revolution. Happy Hawkins has the key to organizing an alternative society is to organize people around what they want and, more, and what they can do. There is no ideology except what he ah! brings with him. The role he plays in the alternative society will shape that, that society's future. If you do not simply seek to change the laws, we must change the way we think and act in society. Each of us has our own unique visions for a future, yet still, we are here standing in solidarity to fight, to fight these divisions. It is these dreams that have brought us together and which will continue to give us courage. We stand here now in Springfield, Illinois, a plurality of voices who have sacrificed their time, body, and mind to show solidarity, our unity of revolutionary action. We are the fields, we are the farmers, we are the heartland of America. We, in solidarity with the movements across the world, fight for our fields. These are our fields, our factories, our jobs. We refuse to give into the system. If we stand strong with our demands for a more just, equitable world, we will grow in numbers and make our voices heard. Then we can hope to someday have these ideals realized. This is only the beginning. Today we yeah. stand together in solidarity to build a future for us all. Yeah.